Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today, we're gonna to take you through the assembly and installation of the eight foot by eight foot heavy duty bimini top from pontoonstuff.com. We're gonna start by opening up the box. So we're gonna take a look at everything that's gonna come in the box, and then we can start from there. You've got your frame pieces. So we have two sides. Just gonna peel that off. You'll need some wire cutters or scissors to get rid of these zip ties. When we take this out of the package, what I'm paying attention to, I'm gonna actually lay this out on the floor, oriented how it's gonna go on the boat. And the way this works is this bracket right here is gonna be forward on the boat. So what that means for me is that this is my port side. So this is my left side. I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here. We are installing this on a rubber floor so we don't scratch everything up, but if you're doing this at home, if you do it in your yard, maybe in your living room on the carpet, it'll keep it from getting scratched. We've got our actual Bimini canvas. This is navy blue to go on this blue boat right behind us. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. We have a hardware box. I'm gonna set this aside. We'll come back to it shortly here. We're gonna get the rest of our framing out. These are our cross bows. So these are uh, just Bimini top is a four bow system. We're just gonna set these up towards the top for now because they'll eventually connect our two outer pieces. And then our last item in the box is our starboard side piece. And again, identifying this, this bracket is going to face forward when it's on the bow. So we'll set this over here. Back to our hardware box now. We've got this kind of laid out, oriented how it will go. Let's open this up, come in close here. You've got your instructions and something to pay attention to on these is that it's going to show you your inch and a quarter Bimini frame, but we really need to look at the mounting locations for eight foot long frames. 34 inches from the stern support to the middle support and I measure that in between the supports. We'll show you that in detail. 38 inches between the middle support and the front support. We've got an electrical bag here with some hardware. So this we're gonna use to run electric to the stern light, the anchor light on the top of the Bimini frame. We'll set that aside for now. These are going to go up on the boat. These are our brackets. They're mounting brackets. The cool thing about these is your seats will be below where the pin goes through and where everything mounts. So these make the bimini sit up nice and high. No rubbing or chafing on your seats, ruining the vinyl. Those will go right up on the boat. And then our last piece, we have our connecting tubes. These have a spring button in them which makes it easy, but these are what's gonna hold all of our frames and crossbows together. Our hardware bag, I'm gonna go ahead and open this right up. If you're using these splices, you, you can absolutely, I would tape them or heat shrink them with heat shrink tubing or use a heat shrink butt splice. We have nylock nuts with stainless bolts. Those are actually gonna hold our mounting brackets to the railings. We have Allen wrenches if you need to tighten anything up in terms of the Bimini frame. And then we have a little plastic grommet, which is gonna be for the wiring on the anchor light. So before we get any further into this, we need to run our electrical for our stern light. So the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna take that 16 gauge black and red wire. Black is your ground, red is your power. And the way that this will coordinate with your boat, whether you have a new boat or you're using the pontoon stuff wiring harness, your red will eventually connect to the gray with a blue stripe and the black will connect to the black or the ground wire. Doesn't matter which bow I use, I'm just gonna take one and I'm gonna start by running my wire through that hole in the bottom so the bow is arched. I'm gonna run through that hole in the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and run it out the side. I'm gonna pull all that slack through gently. And then what I do to make sure that I don't go too far is I just tie a soft overhand knot towards the end. So that way I can pull all my slack out and not 
pull my wiring through because I need this to tie into the anchor light. Another big step that you don't want to miss is we're going to take that lead end and I need to run it through that connector. So I'm just going to slide that through and I'll go ahead since I'm here and I'm going to push this spring button here to allow it to slide in and it will click into place. So now my wire is through that. This is the farthest rear bow across. I've got my end of my power cable for my stern light. What I need to do is run this through the rear tube of the actual support. So that's why I lay this out. So I know this is my starboard side. This is gonna go on the driver's side. That's where the wiring is for the stern light. Before I do that, if I try to just push this through, it might go eventually, but we've got a little hack for that. It's called the vacuum trick. The vacuum trick came to us credit to Marty. What I'm gonna do is take some of that bubble wrap and it's nice and light, so it's not super heavy, super thick. And I'm gonna tape that to the end of my power wire. We're trying to keep this nice and sleek, so I'm gonna use as little tape as possible. And then this is actually a little bit on the long side, so I'm just gonna tear off about an inch there and leave myself just a little tail. So the way that this works is the vacuum is gonna be on the bottom end it's going to give the vacuum something to pull through and kind of take up space in that tube to pull the wire through. This is really cool. I need to put it in the farthest back bow. I'm going to start it in there just a little bit and I'm going to hook the vacuum up at the bottom here. This is a pretty heavy duty shop vac. It works the best. I haven't even tried it with our smaller shop vac, but this gets the job done. I'm going to take another piece of bubble wrap from the packaging. And what I'm going to do is position my vacuum around the bottom of that farthest rear bow. I'm going to wrap this around. And once I start the vacuum, it's going to hold that nice and tight. Here we go. I'm going to feed this through. I kind of have to push and pull to help it through. Once I've only got a couple feet of wire left, I should be pretty darn close. But just like that, my wire is vacuumed right through. What happens is that end of the cable will get stuck on some of the hardware that's running through that holds everything together. So that's where you're just gently pushing, pulling three to six inches back and forth and you'll feel it take it when it gets past that hardware. I'm gonna pull my wire till it's nice and snug through all of the tubing. And then I can just start right in the rear here by loading the spring button in to connect the bow to the frame. I'm gonna repeat that same step for all the bows and we're gonna go ahead and tie all of the framing in together. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my bows to this side. And then we'll repeat the process on the port side too. Before I put any in all the way, I'm gonna get them all started. Then once they're all pushed to the spring button, I can go ahead, push the spring button in and move them all into position. Our frame is fully assembled. We're gonna go ahead and move to wiring our stern light in before we put the canvas on. I prefer to just set the bimini on my lap and that way I can work on it right here in front of me. We'll go ahead and untie that knot. And I'm gonna split these wires just apart here and strip them back. Twist the end of that copper wire and that'll make it fit into my butt splices better. 
these are heat shrink butt splices. The blue butt splices that come with the kit would completely be fine, but you would want to tape them or heat shrink them in some way, shape or form to keep moisture out. You can pick up connectors like this at your local hardware store or, or a local auto parts store. And the way that they work is I hit them just with the blue part of my lighter or a heat gun, and that's gonna shrink the tubing. I'm not hitting my wire, just the tubing, and there's a glue involved too that's gonna help seal everything up. We are reusing the stern light that was on the boat before, but before I splice these in, I'm gonna use this plastic grommet. It's a wire protector, and I'm gonna go ahead and thread it on so that's in the position where once installed, it can slide in and it's gonna go into this half inch hole that's in the bow. We'll leave that be for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and splice. I have a gray wire and a black wire. Yours may be a little bit different, but typically the black wire is gonna to go to the black wire. Black is almost always ground in the marine industry. And then your other colored wire, whether it's white, gray, red, that's gonna to go to the red wire or your power wire, positive wire. With the wiring ready to go, I can now install my light into the top of the bimini frame. I'm gonna line it up at the center the best I can. And these are just a stainless self-tapping screw. I'm gonna gently drive it in. Our light is installed. So looking at the underside here, I'm gonna push that red and black wire in all the way to those butt splices are in. And then I can use that black grommet, push it right in there. Now my wires can't chafe on the aluminum square tube. We are all done with the frame for now. We're gonna go ahead and jump up on the boat and install our mounting brackets and lay those out to see where they're gonna fall. You're gonna need those stainless nuts and bolts for this next part, as well as those mounting brackets. We're gonna take them up on the boat. The other thing you will need is a quarter inch drill bit. I have a long extended bit. If you don't have one of those, you just need a pen or a Sharpie to mark spots on the railings where you're gonna install. You'll also need a 7 16 wrench or socket for the nut and a Phillips number three or just a Phillips head screwdriver. This is a Phillips head number three screw, but you'll need that to tighten the mounting brackets. And you will need a tape measure to measure out your brackets. I've got my tape measure and I'm gonna go ahead and start with one side and line up my mounting brackets. I know I need 34 inches between the rear and center bracket and then 38 inches to the front bracket to account for all three mounting brackets, plus the space between, I need 79 and a half inches of total railing space to span it. Laying the tape out, I've got plenty of space. The next thing I need to consider is where I want the bimini to actually cover. So the front edge, it's gonna extend just beyond our bracket and same thing in the back. The goal with this boat is to be able to fish up towards the front and have the back covered to shade people if they need it in the back. So we're gonna make our last bracket or rear bracket as far back as we can towards the corner right before the curve. The other thing to check on are any accents or joints in the railing. We need to make sure that we're not gonna be into a joint. We need to be where we can run a bolt all the way through the railing and have access to tighten the nut on the bottom. With my rear support in this position, I will cover just behind the back seat. And then I can also take into account when I lay the bimini all the way down for transport, it's gonna extend a little bit beyond. I don't want it hanging way off the back of the boat, but in this position, I think it will clear the back seats well enough without having too much weight off of the back of the boat. So if I start here and then I measure up 34 inches, I want to just make sure that I'm not going to interfere with anything. And as you can see, I'm going to be pretty close to the throttle. So if that bracket were sitting at 34 inches, it's going to potentially get in the way of that throttle. I don't want that. So what we're going to do is just move everything forward slightly. Put those two in position. 
nothing interfering here or on the middle bracket. We're gonna do that last measurement, 38 inches to the front. Again, I'm measuring the space between the brackets to mount them. On this boat, we're a little bit lucky because everything is mirrored. The railings are the exact same on each side. Take that into account on your boat before you start drilling holes. I've got these laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and start with that rear bracket. I'm gonna get that one drilled and bolted. Then I'll measure my space once more to permanently mount my center and forward brackets. When dealing with a mirrored layout like this railing wise, I'm gonna pick a point, in this case, it's gonna be this junction between this 28 corner railing and this longer panel. And that way I can reference on each side, this is 16 and a half inches from that junction of the two railings. So I can do 16 and a half from this crack to the bracket and I'll do the same thing on the other side when it's time to install the port side mount. I'm gonna carefully hold it in place and then I can drill down through. We're going all the way through the top and bottom of the tube. I've got my Phillips head screwdriver and my 7 16 wrench. I like to drop the bolt down through my mounting bracket first, then I can hold it in place, run it down through the railing, and there's just enough bolt on the bottom side to get my nylock nut threaded on, and then when I tighten it, the nylon of that nut is gonna keep it from ever coming loose. We get that nice and snug, and then I move to my next one. So 34 inches. The nice thing is when my bracket is bolted in, I can use my tape measure, and if I need to, say my bracket was a little close, I'm just gonna simply push it till I'm at 34 inches, and that's where my second bracket will go. So same step, I'm gonna hold it down and drill my hole. If I weren't using an extended drill bit, it's a quarter inch, I would put my bracket on in position and I would take a Sharpie and mark on the railing remove the bracket and then drill straight through. And now onto our last bracket or forward bracket, that's at 38 inches. Measure twice, drill once. I like to always measure them one last time after they're bolted in to make sure that we're keeping them in the right position. I will mention you need a fairly skinny screwdriver. This is a number two Phillips, but I'm just using it to hold the bolt in place. But the hole that you're gonna go down through is relatively small. It helps to have a skinnier screwdriver to go down through for tightening. I've got my brackets on the starboard side all installed. I'm gonna move on to the port side and repeat the exact same process, same spacing to make everything nice and even. All of our mounting brackets are in, which means we've only got a couple more steps to getting this installed. We're gonna get the bimini top frame up on the boat, and the way that it installs is pull pins through this middle bracket. We'll show you how the rear and the front work as well, but we're gonna go ahead and get our middle bracket installed with that pin on the frame, and then we can get to getting the canvas on. So this is resting in the all the way back position. You could trailer it just like this and it's nice and sturdy to stand it up or to get it to that 45 degree position. I'm gonna stand it up. I'm gonna drop the rear leg. And the way that I get this into the rear bracket is I pinch these top spring buttons and they correspond to the bottom. And that's how 
if we lock it in place. If they don't both engage in the bracket, just give it a little twist and they'll typically pop in. That's tipped in that back position. As you can see, the rear is gonna just cover this back bench, which is what we are after. We're gonna grab the canvas and we're gonna put that on. The way that we do that is we start with the back and it's labeled back and there's a hole that's gonna slide over the light. And then we just work our way forward with the zippers. Really helpful to have two people on this, but it is manageable if you're by yourself. In that box with your canvas, you're gonna have the main canvas and when you open this up, you're going to find the boot cover as well. It's just a skinnier zipped up. This covers the canvas when it's tipped back or in storage. Protects the canvas from sun fade and wind abuse as well. So I'm gonna locate the rear, which is labeled Deckmate. This is the eight by eight and it says back right on it. That's just a tear away tag. And there's a hardware bag with snaps. We're gonna set that aside for now. We'll get these installed in just a minute. A quick tip, I would go ahead and unzip every zipper first before you get working on it. That way everything is ready to zip back up. So here, Corey's just locating the zipper, getting it started on that rear bow and then she'll start the other side too, and we can just zip out to the outside. Once the rear bow is zipped on, we're gonna pull the front half of the frame system forward. And then I think it is easier to go ahead and zip that front bow before doing your middle bow for the front portion. It is common when the whole bimini is on to have to pull, put a little bit of force down to get this to latch on the front bracket. That's gonna help keep everything nice and snug as you're boating. What I like to do before I fasten any of our snaps is I like to just make sure everything is centered. We have these little plastic clips. These can be screwed in to the tube and they just help when everything collapses together to keep it nice and organized. You could run a self-tapping screw in there, or if you're gonna leave your bimini up most of the time, you may not even use them. So I look at where we are centered. We could use a tape measure and run it up. The other way to look at it is we have a center seam, and I try to get that as centered as possible. It's generally gonna rest about halfway through the curve on the front and the back. In that hardware bag, we have four stainless steel self-tapping snaps. These are gonna go in on the square tubing to help keep everything snug. Starting in the front, we have a strap. You could run this down and snug here, or I tend to wrap it around and I put the snap on the other side so I'm not seeing the fabric side snap. So what I do is wrap it around, put a little bit of tension on it, and then I can make a mark right about where it's at. And then I'm gonna gently get this started. And once it starts to drill, then I can go ahead and give it a little force. Get that snapped and we'll go to the other side. For the rear snaps, I almost always end up going just below this bracket on the outside, just into the square tubing. You gotta leave just enough space for the snap to snap, about a quarter of an inch, and I put it right in the middle, and that will pull this back part of the fabric nice and snug. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Our snaps are in. The one last thing that I do on each boat is I do fasten this with a self-tapping screw so that when this collapses, 
it can grab and stay nice and organized. So I make sure it's in a position where I can screw it in. It won't interfere with anything. This will be able to tip back. Could actually probably go a little bit lower and then I'll run my self tapping screw in there. And this could also be riveted in too, if you prefer. I'll measure and make sure that we're the same on both sides. Our bimini is up and ready for everything, but we still need to run our electrical for our stern light. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tip this back so I get a little more light to work on, and then we'll get this wired into our accessory harness from pontoonstuff.com. So when I hit my navigation light switch, I get my anchor light too. We're gonna go ahead and tip this back. The way that I find easiest to collapse this, whether I'm on the water or just setting it up, is I go ahead and I stow those front braces. I come to the back and I push that back bow that I can grab on. And that way I can stack the bows and it won't get all crazy as it comes down. Take my storage boot. We kick our shoes off so we're not walking all over the new seats. And there's a hole in the center that's gonna go over that anchor light. What I'm going to do is just bunch up the excess canvas, tuck it into the boot, and then zip to the center. Just a reminder that boot is basically an insurance policy to protect the canvas from the sun, the wind, the elements. It's a cheap part to replace if you ever need another one from pontoonstuff.com. And I will say from experience, if you have a long way to trailer or even going on the highway or faster speeds, I would highly recommend putting some sort of snap or zip tie between these two zippers. And that's just gonna protect you from losing your boot cover on the road. Looking at the electrical on this boat, this is a side mount control box on the railing, which is pretty, pretty typical. Your boat may look just like this. What I can do when I have this sort of situation is I can incorporate my wire right into the bundle of ignition cables shift throttle cables that are running down through the floor that's exactly what i'm going to do on this we'll use some corrugated tubing to make this a little prettier but what's going to happen is we'll tie it here and then we'll run it down behind so it's out of the way down through the floor what i need to do first is i need to grab my gray with a blue stripe on my accessory harness and the black wire that's corresponding to that, the ground. And I'm gonna run them up through this hole so I can have an easier time wiring. You could use just a heat shrink bullet style connector. I'm gonna use a waterproof quick connector. In case I ever wanna take the bimini right off of the boat, I need to be able to disconnect my wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this in to our power wire. I'm gonna pull all the slack out. I'll end up pushing this side up into the frame to hide it. I could probably leave this wiring hanging out. Nothing would get hurt. It's coated, they're heat shrink, but we're gonna pretty it up with just a little bit of split conduit. And then I can push my excess up through. Sometimes I have to pull my pin, but we'll push the excess wire back up in. With that plug in place, I can now use the remainder of that red wire because my blue with black isn't quite gonna reach all the way. So we're gonna run the rest of my plug to the red and black wire, which will connect to that accessory harness, gray with blue and the black. The reason I do the connection here is because once I tie my wires up, I need it to be quick and easy. I don't wanna have to untie all my wiring down past the control box in order to remove the connection. Adding a splice in on a low voltage item like this isn't gonna be a big deal in the big picture. We can plug that in just to see where everything's gonna go. And we need to make sure that we can run our throttle. So actually what I'm gonna do is run this down through inside, straight down the front of the control box so it's out of the way. 
with my wiring now where I'm going to have it run. We will cover this in that split conduit as well. But I want to just go ahead and get it spliced into my ground and then that gray with the blue stripe. So we'll splice that. And then we can pull any excess down back through the floor to clean everything up nicely. I'm going to tie that in to my accessory harness. Again, with heat shrink butt splices. If you haven't noticed, we use them on everything, at least everything that can get wet, which on a boat, pretty much everything. So we just run the split conduit. It helps to add just a little bit of electric tape every six to eight inches or a foot or so, just to help keep everything nice and tidy and inside. And just for fun, now that our power's all hooked up, <gasps> always nice to see our anchor light working when we use that switch on the dash. That is one of the huge beauties of the accessory harness from pontoonstuff.com is everything plugs and plays with their switch panel. Literally just plug it in and all of my switches correspond to the wires that run out. And then all I have to do is tie into those. Makes my life so much easier than trying to make my own harness or do something different. We're gonna run that split conduit all the way down through the floor. We'll give it a little excess that we can tidy up underneath the deck when we get to that point. To keep this nice and tidy and out of the way of our shift and throttle lever, I'm just gonna use a wire clip and that's gonna tie it nice and tight to the railing. I'm not going through the paneling, keep in mind, I'm just tying it into the top of this square tube of the rail. The last steps to get this nice and tidy is just pulling it nice and snug down to where all of the ignition harness shift throttle cables and such go underneath here. So we're just zip tying it in nice and snug with all of those components. When I tie it in here, I'm gonna try to avoid putting a ton of tension on the actual shift throttle cables because we wanna leave them some freedom to be able to move at least that close to the control box. So I'm gonna tie it into the ignition harness, the electrical for the motor instead. We'll run a few series of zip ties all the way down. And then all that's left to do is go underneath and tie my wires up nice and tidy on the bottom side. That is how you install this eight by eight bimini top from pontoonstuff.com. Gonna keep you shaded, it's heavy duty. You can go full throttle down the lake and it's gonna stand up to the wind, the elements, and keep you comfortable on those hot days. Thanks for watching.